but that's a, that's about right. Do those taste like radishes too? The turnips? No, it has a turnip flavor. The turnips we had tasted like radishes. <laughs> that's interesting. I, I'm not sure why that would be. Were they planted next to radishes? No. They got a about a You know what? Red turnips really are a lot better peeled, aren't they? Yes. A lot better. Yes, I couldn't convince my mother, so I could eat her. Well, these turnips <laughs> right here, I never peel just because I don't have the patience. Yeah. But they would be better, but they're still good, even not uh, peeled. So it's a much milder. The other thing that's fun is you try growing things in this cool climate. There's a couple of neat benefits. Radishes are a little bit milder. It has a crisper. They taste nice. The turnips have a better taste. Everything tastes a little bit better. But start looking at, and we'll show you this on the next slide. Let's see what else is interesting here on this one. Beets, three different varieties of beets. Uh, there's a whole bunch of types of beets out there. Ones with dark red leaves, the ace variety and the ruby beets. And there's a variety of others that have nice green leaves. So if you like the greens, there's varieties of beets you can grow for greens. And they'll still end up having a nice, a nice size beet. Now a lot of times when I started gardening, I wanted to wait until I had that big, huge beet. You know, size is what mattered. It's not. Go for the best taste. Once you've got the best possible crop, pull it, eat it, and move on to something else. And, and all the leftovers that you can eat, hopefully you've got friends and family or neighbors you can give it to, and if not, you got the chickens will still love them, right? So, the other thing here, these are potatoes. Uh, these potatoes we planted on March, uh, about the 1st of March, and we started greening the potato seed the second week of February. Who knows what greening is? Anybody know what greening is? When you get a seed potato, or even when you buy at the store, you know, it's sometimes it's wise to buy seed potatoes. The ones at the store, they get dusted so they won't seed. They'll probably eventually seed, but they'll not do as well. So if you buy seed potatoes that are certified, you just place them someplace. I don't care if it's light or if it's dark, just where it's warm, 70 degrees or more. So not on window sills. That's a horrible place to try to grow seeds or any place else. It's too cold. But just put them any place. They'll start having the eyes pop out. As soon as those eyes are about a quarter of an inch, you can now start <coughs> cutting those to golf ball sized pieces and planting them. And that'll give you about a two week head start on your tomatoes, or excuse me, on your potatoes. Choosing the variety again, yes. I'm on the potatoes that we offered last October, would those be a good No. No. Those aren't. Okay. Those are great eating potatoes. Those were the big huge ones. Yeah. No, that's not a good potato for us to grow okay. here. I didn't know because they were still dirty. I didn't know if they got dusted. <laughs> no, I mean, that big baking potato does really well in Idaho. It doesn't do as well here. And probably you can get a little bit more flavorful potato okay. by growing some other varieties. So I like the little red ones, the Yukon Golds. Mm -hmm. This happens to be a rose gold, okay? okay? And it's an early potato. And it doesn't matter how long the days are. Some plants matter how long the light period is, and they won't grow well if it's not long enough. Some potatoes care about how long the light period is. This one doesn't. And it's called rose gold, and it's an early variety, so we planted it March 1st. We had our harvest before May 15th. And they were all golf ball size, and then we put in a whole other crop of potatoes. And according to our family, they said it was the best potato they ever had. It was just like cutting it. It was just like butter. And had a lot of flavor. We have some red potatoes that last year, well this is the second year, but we didn't use all of them up uh -huh. and they started to grow. Well, last year I just put them in the ground and we got more potatoes. Is there a problem with repeating that and doing that over and over? Not that I know of. Okay. You know I do that with my garlic a mm -hmm. lot is that whatever's left over I replant and I've had it at one point that it seems like my garlic bulbs aren't getting as large as they were. So you might start getting not quite as high quality, I don't know. So, you know, some garlic seeds expensive. You know, for a few pounds it costs 10, 15 bucks. So I just use what I have and I still have plenty of garlic. So, 
Next slide. You plant the seed or do you plant the bulb? Of, of the garlic. The, <laughs> the clove is what you So you take that bulb and you break it up into each clove, and that's what you plant. How are you watering this when you have snow all around? Fantastic question. When you look at the uh, plastic over the top, mm -hmm. it's just like a terrarium. So by this point in May, I am watering it. But up through today, I've only taken the hose out there once, and I don't know if I needed it, but I did it anyway, just because I felt like I needed to water it. You just don't need much water during the winter. As soon as it starts getting warm, you need to apply water and how I do that is with a, I don't know if you've ever heard of mitt lighter. They used to have down at Thanksgiving Point a mitt lighter garden. He used to live here in uh, Sandy, or he passed away a couple of years ago. But there's a lot of books out there uh, that he's done. He's helped people in third world countries grow a lot of food. So those would be another good book that I'd recommend. But his method of watering, I really like. This is just three quarter inch PVC pipe. I've tied it into my sprinkler system. Comes on with a timer. I think that's extremely important. Watering consistently is extremely important. Just like you and I, we, we don't need water once a week. We need water every day. Now there are some crops that do fine being irrigated that way, but most of us in our backyards can't irrigate. So this way I turn on my sprinklers this pipe gets water to it every day for about four minutes in the spring and the heat of the summer maybe six minutes and that's all the water that it needs it gets just enough water you know how much water you need by when the water starts dripping out the bottom of the box you have enough water in there so you can go ahead and, and time it do you have secondary water in your sprinkler i do system? but again if you didn't have secondary water this would be the only way i could afford to water if you're trying to water you know, with sprinklers, you're keeping those on for 30 minutes. And, and the water's not going where you want it. It's going on the leaves that doesn't really help. So what happens is this pipe's the thin wall. I think that's the 20 schedule. Is that right? And you just drill three holes with the smallest drill bit you have every four inches. That takes a little bit. So you have to make sure you make a really good dinner for your husband <coughs> that night, and then you send them out. But... Uh, that's how you do that, and again, these pipes are almost 10 plus years old, so they last, they just don't have any problems. Uh, what's the smallest drill that you can get in a set? Do you know what it is? 564s? Is that what it is? I, I'm not enough of a workman. Is the smallest drill that you get in a set will work? Mint Lighter, if you go read his book, wants even a smaller one that you can only buy at uh, craft stores, and they break too much. And so I don't bother with them. I just use the one that's the one you get in that cheap drill set at the uh, Home Depot. Do you put the same amount of water on all your plants? I do, for the most part. I have at the end of each box, and I don't know if we can see one here, but right up here, here there is a shutoff valve. So if I needed to, I could shut off the water. And, but otherwise, I just put on the same amount. It's a little bit every day. So they always have enough. And, and so the next question that really goes along with that is fertilizing. I also like following the mitt lighter fertilizing method. And it's again, you just give enough fertilizer each week. And what enough is, in, in his world, I use the 16, 16, 16, whatever even type, you know, where all the numbers are the same. I use that, uh, get it IFA when it's the cheap, whatever the cheapest stuff is I can buy. Now, Mint Lighter has these nutrients that you can add to it, which he calls his micronutrients. And I put them in there just because somehow he sold them on them. Larry Sagers thinks that's uh, uh, snake oil. So, I mean, he says in our Utah soils, we have all those micronutrients. You don't need to add them. Nothing's missing. And they cost a little bit of money. But you know what? For some reason, I think, it was probably psychological when my plants get bigger and greener and it tastes better when I use them. So I do that. I don't know that you have to. I use one soup can per box once a week, and I just take it, and I go very little bit along the line of the pipe. And you can see that sometimes it's sort of hard to do. Once your plants are mature and you're picking them like this, you don't need a fertilizer.